This podcast is made possible through donations from listeners like you and our partners at Tallman Equipment, where they pride themselves on equipping their customers with the tools they need to get the job done right. They are dedicated to set the standard for quality, convenience, and reliability. At Tallman, your opinion is important to them. Rate and review any product or tool you've used on their new website at tallmanequipment.com. Line 11 Clothing Company. Making apparel for our first responders with a positive message to patriots that you can be proud of. The proceeds of the cost goes to helping our foundation ignite the fire for father engagement. Give them a follow at Line11Clothing on Instagram. And last but not least, Monzingo Knives. Each knife is created with craftsmanship that only a tradesman could provide. Find them on Instagram at Monzingo Knives and get your American-made Monzingo knife today. Welcome to the Show Up Dad podcast. This podcast is created for hardworking fathers. Today, my wife and I are hosting Cody and Katie Sandoval. Cody has been on our show before on the Lyman Chronicles, Volume 18. He is a husband, a father, a friend, and a journeyman lineman. He has been in the trade for about 20 years. Today, he is joined by his beautiful wife, Katie, in which they have been married for over 15 years and have three beautiful children. Katie has been a stay-at-home mom for 13 of those years. Besides her role as a wife and mom, she enjoys travel, fitness, leading women's Bible studies, and teaching dance and reviewing beauty and home fragrance on YouTube and Instagram. In this episode, we are about to discuss what we believe makes for a healthy marriage. Once again, guys, thank you for coming on and uh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having me back. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Uh, the reason why I was doing this, because I saw such a great need for it. You know, we always talk so much about the father's role, the father's role and how to be a good father, how to be a good dad, how to be a show up dad. But one of the key elements to that is being a good husband, a good leader in that family. So that's why we, you know, thought about this, you know, with our hearts into it. And we decided both my wife and I that this would be something that is very needed today in society. I mean, what are some of the, like, what is it? One in one in two marriages are ravaged by divorce. I think that, or one in three, something like that. The statistics right now. I think it's around one in two. I think it's around 50%. I think. I think that's the church. I think even. Well, yeah, but no, I think just in general, it's at least at 50%. Yeah. Is that pretty Exactly. And the, and the sad part is too, that, uh, you're right. I mean, the church is being ravaged by it as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a pretty steady increase for a while. I remember our pastor talking about it Mm -hmm. not too terrible long ago. And I, if I remember right, I think he said that in the, in the church, it is now 50% divorce and outside the church has even exceeded that like Mm -hmm. a few years ago. Wow. That's scary. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's definitely scary. I mean, I mean, you can't even imagine here we are, you know, no wonder people call us hypocrites, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, them hypocrite Christians, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, we're living just as bad as they are, you know what I mean? And shouldn't be that way. We need to show right. people hope. I For think sure. um, everybody in the church, though, is they came to the church because they're hurting and they don't know how to do it properly. And yeah. so um, everybody's just looking for resources and learning how to how to deal with this thing called marriage because it's like God's number one vehicle to mature people and grow you as a person individually and in your relationships in general. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I Thank mean, you. it's interesting that even like you know he he uses scripture like Jesus, the model is the, like, you know, of the church being Christ's bride and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of like marriage wording even throughout the gospel um, with that. But yeah, I think just like anything, um, you know, it's under attack and Christians were actually under more attack, I think. Um, And I don't know. And I think also like, too, you were just saying that like the church is full of hurt and broken people and i think especially you know among our age demographic you know we're in our late 30s 
um, almost 40 there, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think, you know, especially if we grew up, it, it's very likely that a lot of us grew up in, divor in divorced homes or maybe without a parent or uh, maybe we just didn't have great marriages modeled for us. So um, yeah, sometimes I think, you know, it's just as much trying to figure it out <laughs> you know when you've already jumped in so right yeah. how can you move forward if you weren't you didn't have like a good model growing up yeah. so it's like we have to go out there and figure it out on our own mm -hmm. you... through trial and error <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you gotta fake it till you make it <laughs> right <laughs> just don't give up really i mean um you know in today's age uh -huh. the new the new most popular thing in the world to do is to give up and mm. uh, you know when you, we look at marriages out there it's it's kind of almost treated like dating i guess in a sense you know like mm -hmm. they'll say like the world will say hey yeah, let's get married oh if it doesn't work out you know we'll just whatever we'll just be friends or whatever and get divorced and and but, hey we gave it a shot you know <laughs> yeah but um yeah you know i think that's that just goes really with anything if you if you want to succeed at it, you can't quit. And mm -hmm. um, I'll be the first to tell you, my, my wife will be a very close second. It is not easy. No. And we've uh, we've had some knockout dragouts, man. Not and, literally. Not but literally, like... no. Not <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, we've had some we've had some pretty pretty stressful times in our marriage, and um, it would have been very very easy for us to justify leaving mm -hmm. at a, you know at a couple of those points and um well think, we're very opposite like yeah well we, we we're how do i put it that way like we are we are the same in the things that matter so like we're both christ followers and we're both mm -hmm. you know we, we we see life through a pretty similar lens but in terms of like our hobbies or things like Cody would be content living in the mountains, never seeing another human being again, you know, like he, yeah. he, he's yeah. very, uh, <laughs> right. He, he likes that. And I grew up in Southern California. I'm, I'm used to people and I'm used to, um, I'm kind of a city girl, you know? And so it's just kind of funny. He loves to hunt and stuff. I've, I've never gone hunting with him or, mm -hmm. um, she won't go. No, no, I have no interest. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want you do, but <laughs> um. yeah, yeah, like we have very, very different interests. Um, but it's funny. We the things that matter are the things that really keep us together, and they have kept us together through all mm -hmm. the hard times and the, mm -hmm. the arguments and the struggles that we go through and the stresses, but. You know, at the end of the day, no matter how different we are in some areas of life, we we are matched very, very evenly in the things that matter. You know, keeping Christ the center of our life, uh, raising good kids, respectful, God to become kids. Good, good adults. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> yep. Because they're not going to be kids forever. They're, no. you know, the goal is to raise them to be productive members of society. You know yeah but like you just can't give up i guess that's the the point of what i'm trying to say no matter how hard it gets no matter how un unevenly matched uh, in what you enjoy to do or what you like spending your times with you know mm -hmm. time doing um you know god brings people into your life for a reason and uh it's you got to make it work and there's a lot of blessing in taking that extra step just to make sure that it works mm-hmm Mm -hmm. definitely i agree with you 100 percent um they definitely are there to to fill in that piece of the puzzle that we're missing you know on both ends you know both the husband mm -hmm. and, and the wife you know my wife is everything that i'm not mm -hmm. and am i everything you are not? yeah exactly <laughs> like what you um said katie that we're exact we're like complete opposites like yeah <laughs> my husband's very driven and he like it likes the ranch like isolation type of stuff too yeah. um i grew up in the city as well but i mean apart from those things like 
I have a different perspective on the way that I view the world and he has a different perspective, but I've learned so much from being married to him because he is so opposite. He's a lot right. like I'm more laid back and chill and he's like, I got to finish this. And then the next project comes and I got to finish this. And, and like, things are like finished one thing after another, after mm -hmm. another. And, and that's really <laughs> like taught me a lot of stuff. But I think I, I've grounded him too, or else he would just work himself into the dirt. Oh, for sure. I, I think it's funny because you're actually like, I'm thinking of, I'm, I'm more like Dave than probably. And I mean, Cody's driven, but he's definitely more, he can, he oh, can dude, relax. I will call him know? sick and go fishing. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> whereas I'm constantly the like, like. I gotta get, I've gotta get stuff done, you know, all the time. And, and it is funny because as I was just thinking, like how you're describing like the differences, how horrible would it be? Like if I was married to somebody with the same personality as me, I really think like it would be awful because like I can be a pain in the rear, you know? And, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I almost think that that's actually a, a divine balance that God gives in marriages is that, you know, he doesn't have us marry the same person, you know, that mm -hmm. we are, because that would create so much friction. Um, but yeah, I, I talk about like, I know a big thing between Cody and I is that I am definitely much more emotional than <laughs> he is, but I guess we go like, you know, I guess stereotypically, but like, I know that there are some people who say that the, the wife is more stoic and, you know, um, I, I like to be logical, but my emotions, like I, I always say, I hate it. Like I, I cry so easily. Like I'll cry. If I'm angry, I'll cry. If I'm happy, I'll cry. If I'm mad, like I'll cry if I'm sad. And Cody, <laughs> Cody's like, Oh my goodness, this woman, like she's always crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just worried about her dehydrating, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but, he, but he definitely, you know, yeah, he can definitely be somebody that can, even if there's a time where like, we have a disagreement about something, sometimes I get really heated and I just kind of want to like duke it out and he will recognize and say like, you know what, we just need to take a breather and, you know, I need to go have some space. You need to have some space. I'm not talking like have some space, like forever. It's just like, maybe spend like 30 minutes, you know, to kind of calm down, cool down, and then we can come back together and discuss this because otherwise he just re realizes like oh boy now she's just spinning spinning the wheels and now we're going to bring up every single thing that has ever bothered you you know which is never not fair but <laughs> when, but when emotions start taking over you know we, we start to go to crazy town so yeah it's interesting because there are actually two different types of uh personalities when it comes to fighting in marriages there's one mm -hmm. that's called the shark which sounds like that's what you are Katie where you just yeah. want to go after it you want answers you want all these things and then there's the turtle which I actually resonate with the turtle actually no sometimes I can be the shark though I think I'm both the turtle kind of <laughs> just wants to hide away and like okay, let's calm down and we'll deal with this later type of personality. Like they hide in, in their shell where it's safe. And, and then, and then the shark just wants answers. They want to fix it. They want it to be done and over with. They want to attack the problem, you know, right. Right. making it worse, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the hard thing too, is like, I think it's important that at least you prioritize coming back to resolve the conflict because yeah. if you don't do that then then there's problems um but yeah the whole like um wanting wanting it to be fixed and sometimes too like I've had to tell Cody like as we've grown in marriage like sometimes I'll, I'll have to tell him like sometimes when I'm saying stuff I I finally have even said to him like I just need to vent like I don't need you to fix this problem for me I don't need you to do that like sometimes I'm just upset about something and and it maybe not even be something that he did it's just like whatever something's going on in the world but that's upsetting me but it's coming out in how I am treating him or the kids or something you know because I, I'm just upset about something you know and him being that safe person that I can finally come to and say like hey this is I'm acting this way because I'm really bothered by 
this situation, you know? I, I think that's a great point because um, part of communication is kind of knowing what we need. And mm-hmm. I think for women, we really <clears throat> like relate and bond to people by just talking, like, especially to other women, we'll just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. <laughs> and then when we come to our husbands, the husband's like, okay, well, I need to fix it for you. Cause you're right. in pain. And right. I think like, if we go to our men and say, you know what, babe, I'm like bugged and I don't want you to fix anything. I just need to mm-hmm. talk. Like, I just need to release that steam. Right. Do you think that helps you, honey? When I, I do that? Yeah, definitely. It, it helps out a lot. Cause if not, we're forever trying to fix a problem that we cannot fix. And then we get frustrated because it's like, well, what the hell I'm giving you, I'm giving you answers. Why can't you see the answer? You know what I mean? (laughs) It it just, it just starts going on that crazy cycle. Like, like Casey, uh, Katie said, you know what I mean? That, that crazy train. So it definitely is a, is something that we need to pay attention to. Um, I like that you said creating a safe environment as well, because that's what a lot of honest communication is, you know, mm-hmm. it's just creating that safe environment. You know, when you can team that honest communication and have a safe environment, I believe trust builds from that, you know, because, right. because honestly, like when I didn't create a, 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 a safe environment for my wife to come to me with some of her problems, when I'd bite her head off, like, what, what do you want now? You know, uh-huh. she didn't want to open up to me. No. Nope. Why? Because she was going to get her head bit off, literally, you know? Mm -hmm. And for women, we are very, I mean, like how we, how we bond is through, like she was saying, like is through talking and it's more emotional for us, you know, and that is um, being able to establish an emotional connection goes very far um, in a marriage. And it can also, the lack of it can also um, open up doors for, for areas and paths you don't want to go down. You know, if, if a, like I know for me, and I have actually witnessed this, um, when a woman feels like she can't come to her husband with things, then at some point, another man might, you know, and you don't, you just don't want to open up the door for that. Yeah. So. That's a, yeah, that, that can be real deadly. I think another kind of the pitfall that that men fall into at least I do mm-hmm. is uh like okay you come home from work right you've been solving problems all day you're tired mm-hmm. your wife comes to you and starts like boom boom like hitting you with all this crazy stuff that's been going on <laughs> and like you said like it's like okay you know I, I just worked a crazy day I've, I've been you know I've been on the wood for three days straight no lunch whatever get home and now there's this other problem you know god dang and you tend to bite their head off because you kind of view it as another problem because it's like you got you got to fix the problem but um when all she's wanted to do is she hadn't seen you in three days so she needs to talk to you and vent to you and reconnect with you well and she's and, been home with children yeah oh my gosh kids are crazy our kids play this game the younger two. The not younger the two, not the teenagers. Sure, too. <laughs> the younger two play this goofy game called Baby Pig. Oh. I have no clue where they got this from. They just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> it is the most annoying thing. Like, remember Dumb and Dumber, the guy in the car just like, Ehh! yeah. <laughs> I swear to you, dude, that's what it is. And they make that movie. <laughs> In the door, and I'm like, what in the heck is going on? And they've been doing it for like eight hours. Like, my poor oh, wife no. sitting in the corner, like crying. <laughs> She's chewing on her nails in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll text them at like 9 a.m. I'm like, oh, you're missing a rousing version of baby pigs going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, so yeah. <laughs> but but it's like, okay, like your wife's been going through that. You know, you come home. And she just wants to vent to you or, oh my gosh, this happened or whatever. And rather than just come to the, like I finally, it's taken years. Mm-hmm. It's taken years, honest to God, <laughs> where I don't try to, I'm like, okay, this isn't a problem that she wants me to solve. This is just her venting. I'm just going to shut up and listen. 
-hmm. you know and if it's something she actually wants me to solve she'll ask me mm -hmm. like hey what do you think about this or that but uh man it's taken a long time what are we 15 years almost 16 almost yeah. 16 years yeah just now oh go ahead i'm sorry oh, that's okay i was gonna say i think it's interesting that you brought that up cody because i think it's really important for women to understand also like men have their own things that they're dealing with and we have what we're dealing with at home which we're just so relieved that our husbands came home because we're like oh my gosh i just need to like unload on you but I think the man needs like some time to decompress from their day before uh -huh. we can, we should like come to them and just be like, Bleh. here's all the, the vomit from the day. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, no just, way. <laughs> Cause I think it can really just, um, change the whole dynamic of the rest of the time at home. Like I remember, he would come home from being out of town. David would come home from being out of town. And I was holding everything in all week long because I didn't want to talk about problems with the little bit of time we had because I knew he had a dangerous job and I didn't want him to be thinking about that while he was doing the dangerous job. So right. then when he would come home from being out of town, it was like, here's all the vomit from the week. You know what I mean? Right. And I would just like <laughs> unload it on him. And then it would kind of blow up the whole family dynamic when he got home because he didn't know what to do with it all. Cause he was in his, um, his, I want to relax box. I'm at home box. Cause you know how, have you ever heard the saying where men are like waffles and women are like spaghetti? Yes. Or, well, men can only be in one box at one time, but women like their thoughts are like a plate of spaghetti. Every single thought runs into another thought, which runs into another thought, which runs into another thought, but men aren't like that. So when we start opening all these boxes for them, they're just totally overwhelmed and then they get angry. Oh, <laughs> and you hit the nail right on the head when you said overwhelmed, cause that's exactly how I felt. I got home. I'm trying to decompress. Right. And, you know, and all of a sudden I'm getting hit with all kinds of stuff. The, we had an outage, uh, the, the well, we used to live in a farm. So the well went out, you know, all this different stuff that needed to take place. The kid broke his leg, you know, whatever it may be, you know, and it's like, Oh my God. And I, I feel overwhelmed because at that moment I just wanted to relax. Uh -huh. and, then it, and then it turned to anger because I couldn't fix it right there at that moment. Mm -hmm. And you just really wanted to see your family and just yeah. be reconnected with us. And then I'm like, okay, before you reconnect, you have to deal with all this crap. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, I think too, like you were saying, like, you know, there's, you know, our children are older now. Our kids are 13, 10, and eight. I had to think about that for a minute, but that's the ages that they are. But at one point I had three kids under the age of five um, and being at home with them. And even like, I remember like, you know, there's certain things that come with, you know, I know it's not specifically unique to um, this trade. You know, I know that um, my, like, for example, my sister's married to a law enforcement officer, you know, and she deals with a different set of things, but, you know, things like in, when the baby was, babies were newborn, like I never asked him to get up with me. It, like that all fell on me one, because I was nursing, but also because he was going to get up and go work around high voltage electricity. I kind of wanted him to have a full night of sleep, you know? Um, and so just, you know, that kind of that, I don't want to say sacrifice, but just, you know, that role in those early years, I remembered. But then what I would do was I would kind of put so much expectations on myself for being a quote unquote good wife to him that what would happen was, is that little things would start to bother me and then it would kind of breed some resentment um and like I remember one time asking Cody the kids were around toddlers and I had like just been cleaning up dinner and same thing like he wanted to come home and relax and I wanted him to have that time to relax but like kids also needed baths and dinner needed to be cleaned up and stuff and I remembered I was like huffing and stomping around and he looked at me and he was like well, why are you mad and I like exploded on him essentially like well can't you see that like I'm I have a bunch of stuff that I'm trying to get done and you're not helping me and essentially what I was saying and he told me and it just has always stuck with me he said I can't read your mind and my response was like well you should <laughs> like 
<laughs> you should have been married for, you know, at that point, we had been married for quite long enough that I felt like you could read my mind. <laughs> um, and just that it was actually something that has just always stuck out with me that like, okay, if you need something from him, you need to ask, you know, and that's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you or whatnot. Like men legit cannot read our minds um, because they're spaghetti, apparently our spaghetti minds. Yep. <laughs> I went through the exact same thing that you're talking about because I had three kids and a farm and all kinds of crazy stuff too. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested men when you're seeing your woman do all this stuff when you've come home after a hard like work week and stuff like that what is going on in your perspective because I know it's so different from <laughs> our perspective yeah. We're like why don't they care about me why aren't they helping like how come they can't see that I am totally stressed out but I know like men are thinking about other things and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're neglecting but it just means their brain is somewhere else. So what are you guys thinking about when you see all that? Mm, you want to take this one, Cody? <laughs> this is nothing. Is nothing <laughs> right. <laughs> no, to be honest with you, like, um, you know, Dave, you know, you come home, stick with me here, buddy. Mm -hmm. so I, I got you. I'm tracking. <laughs> tracking. Uh, you come home from a long day, you just fought traffic and, you know, you had one of those days where your apprentice is a retard and <laughs> foreman's a jerk and your pull buddies all wadded up on whatever and kind of come home and like, I, I know that I need that decompression time. Like I need to just kind of, I don't know, space out. I don't know what you call it, but we're engaged from the time we get up to the time we get back home through the work day. And I mean, it's not like for, for linemen, it's not like it's, you know, sitting at a, at a, at a desk, you know, and doing a little bit of work and whatever. It's like, you are in it all day. Like you're, you're actively like hardcore engaged, like, because it's, it's pretty dangerous stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so constantly going through this, this regime of just pro constant problem solving, planning ahead, uh, looking five, six, seven, ten steps ahead and trying to line everybody out with those steps. It's just kind of exhausting for me anyway. Maybe Dave's probably a lot better at it than I am. But I need that decompression time when I get home. And I know that sometimes I come home, my wife's going crazy and the kids have been playing baby pig for nine hours. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, freaking, and I, I need that little bit of time. But um, I, I try to do what I, I try to get up and, and I don't try, I do. I get up and do the dishes. I'll load mm -hmm. the dishwasher, empty dishwasher, clean the kitchen. I, I do a lot of stuff like that. But to be honest with you, it's taken a lot of time for me to, it's going to sound weird, but like learn where those lines are in marriage mm -hmm. and <laughs> everybody's wife's going to be different. Yeah. So, well, an acts of service is a big love language yeah. for me. Like you tell me that you love me by, you no. know, with those acts of service, you know, um, don't bring me flowers, <laughs> empty the dishwasher, please. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dead serious. Please. I bring her flowers. She's kind of like, oh, thanks. I'm like, how much did that cost? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's what my wife is too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I, I agree with you, Cody, as well. Um, for me, it took me all this time to, to finally realize as well, because I figured I'm working hard. Why can't you work hard? Like how hard this is, this is the way I used to think. Okay. And it got me in trouble. Mm -hmm. How hard is it for you to keep the house clean? You know, and then <laughs> I, and, and, no, seriously, that's the way I thought. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, okay, well, I'm working hard. Why aren't you working hard? Okay. And it's because I wasn't being empathetic to her. Uh, part of empathy is putting yourself in their shoes. And it wasn't until, you know, within the last year that I actually learned what true empathy was. You know, I didn't grow up in an empathetic household. It was like, you do, that's it. Don't complain. This is your lot. You, you dust yourself off and you go forward. You know what I mean? No one's going to do it for you if you don't do it yourself type of mentality. And I think a lot of times 
you know, for me, I put expectations on my wife that she was able and capable to do it. Not saying that she wasn't capable of doing that, but I didn't recognize where she was struggling. I think a lot of times in marriage, we're created to be the head, right? And, and not in a subservient way or anything like that, but we have certain strengths, right? Our mm-hmm. job is to be a provider, a protector, a, a presider, and, uh, you know, to do these things well with them in our, in our families. And a lot of times I think we use our strengths to sometimes point out the weaknesses in our wife where they're, they're, they're coming up short. And, and that's what I did, you know, um, now I am starting to be empathetic and instead of complaining about the dishes, cause my wife hates doing dishes, mm-hmm. I'll do them. <clears throat> I won't yeah. even complain. I'll just do it because why it, it's no different than being at work. And you have that one guy you work with who is getting paid the same amount of money as you and is doing nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so the job isn't going to get done. So you might as well just do it yourself, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, that that's a part of, having a healthy marriage is having that, that, um, connection where you guys can help each other out. Like what, like if I'm falling short on something, like there's a lot of times, like my wife, she deals with a lot of the podcast stuff and I'm like, you know, not answering people back and stuff like that. She's like, Oh, I got that. I did that. I did that. And I'm like, Oh, thank you. You know what I mean? Cause we, we get busy, you know, and <laughs> vice versa, you know, yeah, I think- I'm sorry, I think- go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> I think um, one of the, the things that God kind of showed me, it was like this weird revelation that he brought to my attention um, through the, this illustration of power, like, because you guys are linemen and you work with the distribution of power and stuff like that. I think it's interesting that we... <laughs> also have energy in our life, in our marriage. Um, and Einstein said that, you know, energy isn't, it doesn't disappear. It's just transferred. And so I was thinking that it's really important that we can recognize what amount of load of energy your spouse can carry and them not break down. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like when you are working on the power lines, like if you have a something that's faulty, you have too much load on something, it's going to start burning up. Yeah. Well, that happens with each person in the marriage. Um, that can happen with kids. I mean, if one person's just carrying way too much because mm-hmm. of what you've chosen to have in your life, like if you have a really chaotic, hectic life, because you have to have all these things and stuff, uh, then who, somebody's going to carry all that. You're just adding more right. energy to that. You know what I mean? So I think it's really important to have empathy and to look and, and be aware of what each person can carry. Cause I think at one point in our, in our marriage, my husband really wanted a farm, but he was out of town all the time. This was not something I wanted, <laughs> <laughs> but because I loved him so much, I carried it for him the majority of the time, um, until I burned up, like it was just too much taking care of an acre with all these animals and then three kids and him being out of town all the time. It, yeah. I just finally burned up. Um, and he, he recognized that and he made huge changes, um, which I'm so grateful for, but I think it's really important for each spouse to kind of be able to see how much your spouse can carry. Like even with David, he'll try to just load more and more onto himself. And I have to tell him, no, you're spreading yourself way too thin because I know if he carries too much because he's very driven (laughs) um, and thinks that he can like accomplish everything, uh, he will start it'll, it'll start breaking somewhere. He'll start burning up. And then the people that pay are the ones that he loves the most because that's where he can break down. Hmm. Even like they had to do that with Cody a few times, like where he'll, you know, sometimes there's the opportunity, you know, to work overtime or, you know, work a weekend or something like that. And like, if he's had a long week and then he's like, well, you mind if I work, you know, on the weekend or something. And like every once in a while, like, you know, we're going to go on a trip or something. It's like, okay, yeah, it would be nice to have the extra money. Um, but then there's also been times where I've told him like, 
look, like if you burn, if you go straight through this week, plus you've got to work all next week. I said, like, I know what's going to happen if you work this weekend, you're going to come home every single day this week. And you're going to be passed out asleep on the couch by six o'clock tonight. And I'm not going to have any time with you, you know, because you're just so burned out, you know? Um, so yeah, sometimes it does take us having to step in, you know, and obviously yeah. not in a controlling way, but just in a, <laughs> like how you were saying, acknowledging that like, they might be putting too much of a load on themselves. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you know, another, another um, good little bit of information too that I wish I had when I was younger, <laughs> first got married. You know, part of, part of being married and um, especially in those early years is, is discovering where your partner's lines are. You know, where their burnout point is, where this is, where that is. And I finally, like, I'm not the brightest guy in the world, so I have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I will, um, over the years, I, I recognize the signs of like, okay, you know, Katie's, she's on the border right now, you know, I, I need to probably <laughs> step in and maybe even do more than what I'm doing now uh, in terms of like chores around the house or, or breaking the kids up from playing baby pig, something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, like, like you were talking about, it's, it's acknowledging where your partner's lines are, where their, the limits and their abilities are, um, and trying to not so much like keep them in check, but, but come alongside your partner and, and help them along it, along mm -hmm. with it, you know, hey, do you, is this something that really needs to be done? If so, you know, let me, let me help, you know, I can, we can share this and, um, and tackle it together or or hey you know maybe this can just don't even worry about it this this is small potatoes you know mm -hmm. but i think those open lines of communication are what that's what that's what uh i think the key is right there is just being able to talk to each other um and for me i know that like one of the things <laughs> For me, you know, sometimes it's overcoming the patterns that were set before you or the things, you know, and I, I love both of my parents. Um, my mother passed away five years ago, but, you know, just what was modeled to you, sometimes you have to overcome, like, you know, I think we all can observe our parents and see things that, you know, good things that they did, but also things that were like, eh, I'd like to do that a little bit better, you know, mm -hmm. and I know that you know, it's interesting because my mother had a very assertive personality and I, I tend to be a lot like that too. Um, and it was funny because I was having a conversation with some girlfriends one time, you know, it talks about in Genesis, you know, when, when, um, part of Eve's curse was that, you know, and it said in your, it, we read it and it says your desire will be for your husband. But I've, I have heard that that actual, that initial translation is actually your desire will be to rule over your husband. Mm -hmm. um, I find myself fighting that a lot of the time because sometimes Cody will be like well you know some of our disagreements have come in like you know decision making for whether it's like especially with the kids you know yeah. some things he'll be like I wish you would ask me about that and like to me I just think like well that's just the right answer or that's you know and so sometimes conflict can erupt because sometimes I think I just know it all which 90% of the time I do no <laughs> <laughs> But it's really, been, it's really been a learning experience for me of being like, okay, like you need to seek your husband's input, you know, ab about those things. Um, even if you think you know where he's going to stand on something, just that respect of, for me to come to him and say like, hey, what do you think about this? You know, um, has been something that I've had to learn as we grow in marriage, I guess. <laughs> so. I, I like what you guys are were talking about and uh, how we went to a biblical standpoint on that. Um, I'm sure you guys heard the term uh, a three corded strand, right? Yes. In marriage to be strong. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have God, the father, right? We have mm -hmm. our husband and our wives and that's a three corded strand that represents strength right there. It's going to be a lot stronger than two cords, right? A, a, right. A rope. Now, with that being said, as a lineman, I'm always looking at alignment perspectives. And I look at that in a sense, like a three pot bank. Okay. When we lose one of those, now we're not operating at hundred percent anymore. Now we're operating at 86.6%. Mm -hmm. 
So in a mm-hmm. sense, we're single phasing is something's going to burn out. Mm-hmm. It's not as strong as that hundred percent pot. Um, Cody, you know what I'm talking about? So, oh yeah, you know what I mean? We lose one of those, man, you know, it can only operate for so long. Yeah. It's you're on a, yeah, that's no joke, man. Um, it's just like we were talking about earlier, you know, this is all by design. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. the bride, you know, this whole, this whole marriage thing to begin with, you know, you have, you have God as, of the of being the head and then the husband and then the wife being, being alongside and (sighs) and people get that so twisted and it's not because it's so funny people always talk about like you know a lot of people will be like oh that's submissive and it's like no 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 like if you actually read that like in context it says like and he's supposed to love his wife as christ loved the church and i think like last last i checked like christ was crucified like (laughs) i don't know like i think you kind of i think you men kind of have the harder (laughs) The harder role you know um in some ways and they're not to you know they're not to be um overly i'm, I'm drawing a blank on the word here but like to exasperate your children you're not mm-hmm. supposed to you know um and and so when you're in a marriage when the husband is fulfilling his role in that and when i'm in my role of that it it blends very well and i don't feel like you know i'm, I'm not a doormat i'm not anything like that it's actually um, it's actually a privilege for me to be his helper and to, you know, come alongside him in that. But yeah, it's definitely both of our, both of our relationship with the Lord is actually what mm-hmm. puts that all into perspective. Um, I think, I think even for families that aren't, they haven't found, um, like Jesus as their savior right. and things like that. I think for every marriage, a woman would be glad to be a helper of a husband that was leading righteously. Yes. In a way that was like a servant to their family where they had their family's best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. Sacrificial. Yes. Clearly that's where this whole concept comes from. It's rooted in biblical terms, but I really feel that women want men to step up and lead their families. We don't want to have to be leading the family in mm-hmm. a, and doing our job too. We want our husbands to be leading in a way that is great and righteous and, and loving and strong and protective. And mm-hmm. I mean, I think any woman would just feel honored to have a husband that was, that took that role mm-hmm. and had pride in it. And I think that that's where like a lot of like just speaking as a woman, um, you know, for any men that might be hearing this. And if you feel like your wife or whatever is not um, like she's being disrespectful or whatever. I mean, it could be a variety of reasons, but sometimes it might be that she's seeing something like that you're doing or saying or like that you're not fulfilling Mm -hmm. um, that that protector that and and not and that goes beyond like protector provider but like she was saying like a a righteousness that she doesn't quite trust that you're like making those decisions and so then she feels like it's all on her to do the right thing um Mm -hmm. and it's almost like the wife when the husband's not doing that what i've seen is the wife has to pick up that slack yes yeah you know and uh like which then resentment and yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it definitely breeds resentment and all kinds of other stuff that is not good no um, but I definitely see that you know and a lot of times I don't know why like for me I don't know why I would step back from that role it was almost like I had taken on so much already that it was like okay she's gonna get that mm-hmm. you know and Little yeah. that I know she's like a turtle, right? She's <laughs> on the surface, she's swimming all calm, but underneath that surface, she's paddling like hell, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh that's something we need to recognize as, as husbands, you know. And I failed to do that myself, you know, and now I'm having to to learn that and see that and make the corrections that are needed because. I mean, we, we put so much on our wives, you know, especially being on the road and stuff like that. It's, it's, 
I had the opportunity to stay home uh, when I retired for COVID. Mm-hmm. And uh, I stopped, you know, I, I started this podcast and this foundation and stuff like that. And I got to see what was going on with my children, you know, everything that my wife had to partake in. And man, they were on Zoom. I was having to get kids ready. And, uh, you know, I had to deal yeah. with a teenager who was depressed because she wasn't seeing her friends and just all these different aspects that husbands don't actually see their wives doing. Mm-hmm. And that's what like going back to like when, when, you know, you guys come home from work or something, your day has probably, I mean, there's probably some emotional exhaustion to it, but it's probably been physically very demanding on you and very exhausting. Whereas, you know, you would come home and see like, well, it's not, I, I mean, it really, it can be, but it's not physically demanding really to try to keep up the house, but emotionally, like when you're dealing with like a depressed teenager or, you know, I have a 13 year old daughter. Let me tell you that girl drama. There's a reason why there's a movie called mean girls. Like they're just, they're mean, you know, um, <laughs> they but they're like, it's hard because you're like trying to like give that like good, good advice, you know, of just like, honey, like, trust me, it's going to get better, you know, and, and that it builds character and all that stuff. And then the, then like the inner teenager and you wants to come out and go slap the piss out of those little twerps, you know, like, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's hard, you know, um, just mentally sometimes are, you know, there's just, there's things that, um, that you go through in marriage, like real life, real life can be hard, you know? And I look back sometimes and, you know, Cody and I were talking a couple of months ago, we've, we've actually known quite a few friends, um, that have gone through divorce or separated or whatnot. And every time, you know, friends go through that, it kind of makes you take stock of your own marriage. Yeah. Um, and, and I told him, I said, you know, what's funny is I think of hard things that God has allowed us to go through together. You know, we got married fairly young, 21 and 23. Um, I was 21. He was 23. Um, and you know, I, a year after we, a year after we got married, you know, our first child was stillborn. I mean, that's a pretty big like mm. thing to go through together, that grief and, and having to navigate like how I grieve differently than he, not, not that it was better than, or, or more than, or anything like that. It was just that we grieved differently, you know, and, um, you know, both of us have lost a parent and just going through those hard things, um, makes you it, it bonds you it sounds kind of mm-hmm. weird but you know there's a bond there through the hard things that you've gone through together too wow i'm so sorry for your loss yes in those things uh david and i have experienced several miscarriages and uh, i mean it's it's just a difficult thing i know that stillborn is is kind of like even more difficult because you've gone full term but yeah I mean, either way, uh, it's amazing because it's not something that's spoken about very often, but when you actually do talk about it, you find out that so many women are actually struggling and going through these same types of things. And, um, it is comforting to know that there is a community of women that, I mean, every, everybody's kind of going through it and nobody's really actually alone. And, you know, if women just come together and pull together and and support each other and, and even like our spouses, like it's great to have your spouse there because they support you through these difficult things and these difficult times. I mean, I can't imagine going through these things alone, not having a spouse or, or, you know what I mean? It would be, it would make it so much harder. So like you said, I agree. Those hard times are really hard, but man, they really bond you together. And I mean even still, you still grieve over those losses though. Oh, for sure. You do, but they definitely, yeah, they, they, they bond you for sure. And I think, like you said, like, it's important, I think to, um, you know, as whatever people are comfortable at different levels, you know, I'm more of an open book type of person. Some people are more private and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Um, I have always felt like, you know, there's, I know when that happened to me, just being able to talk to somebody that had been through something similar was helpful. And I think sometimes even like, there's so much focus on the women when they go through something like that. Um, but the father's grief too. It's just, mm-hmm. it's, it's, you know, right there, <laughs> he's fighting allergies. Um, 
but the fathers go through grief too. It's just different. And not only are they grieving, but I think also then they, they feel the weight of also trying to um, carry their wife's grief or like to comfort, you know, to provide comfort to their wife. You know, I, I think back to, um, ironically enough, David and Bathsheba, that's what I think of, you know, after that first child that from their adultery um, passed away, um, it said that David went in and he comforted his wife, you know, um, I don't know why I just thought of that, but <laughs> it came to my <laughs> you know, it's definitely our jobs to, to, to recognize that and comfort our wives. Um, a lot of times I, I know for me, it's hard to, to show those feelings, mm-hmm. it is, you know, like I could see my wife struggling or, or hurting with something. And I'm just like, for lack of better words, just kind of like looking at her, like what's going on, you know, mm-hmm. that I, I don't know why that is. Um, it's probably something in my past or something like that, the way I was raised or whatever, but I'm having to relearn empathy, mm-hmm. and see, you know, cause I, I guarantee you for me, I wouldn't like it if, you know, if I'm hurting or, you know, like even for instance, when I lost my brother, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that devastated me. I mean, mm-hmm. absolutely devastated me to the point where if I even talk about it for a little bit, I start getting broken up. I love my little brother, you know, oh. he was, he was a lineman as well. But uh, with that being said, she showed empathy towards me for that, you know, and I'm having to learn how to show empathy towards her as well. You know, mm-hmm. she's going through her pain, you know, instead of just thinking, well, handle it, <laughs> you know, get over it, yeah. rub some dirt on it, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, I, tend to, I don't know, like watching Kitty go through, um, of the grief and stuff that we both went through but Mm -hmm. it was like one of the most helpless times like in my life because at that point you know you what are you going to do you can't do anything to fix it you can't you can't help them talk it out i mean what all you can do is just be there Mm -hmm. and man i tell you what looking back that was one of the most frustrating times of my life because like for me, like Katie, you know, Katie was saying, we grieve differently, and uh, I'm the kind of guy where, like, some traumatic happens or something, I'll wander off in the woods and go fishing all by myself for a week. And I'll come, play guitar. Yeah, I'll come back, you know, and then I kind of need my time. Yeah. And not that I'm over it or nothing, but but for that initial kind of crashing experience, I need I need I kind of seek seclusion (laughs) and my wife's totally not that way and um i remember going through a lot of that and i felt just so helpless i couldn't do anything i just sit there and be frustrated you know and yeah we were young when we had only been married a year like i mean it was just like i don't know but it's something that i actually think set up um set up good things you know for then you know paisley was born 18 months after that happened and that's our 13 year old Mm -hmm. um but yeah just you know hard times you know but there's also been plenty of good times too i feel like we got like down all of a sudden there (laughs) like you know there's been lots of good times too so yeah but i think a lot of the like what we're talking about just comes you know empathy you need to put others needs above your own you know that's kind of the root of that and and really just serve one another and i think that's really the the recipe for a good long lasting marriage today is mm-hmm. learning to serve one another and it's kind of gross because like you all on instagram right now and there's all these people talking about like you know you need to self-care and oh, all this I crap hate that word and i'm like well yeah what does that even mean you stupid but <laughs> uh, you know that's that's definitely not self-care is definitely not what christ called us to um if you look in in all of the big characters in the bible that made a difference that god used mm-hmm. these people were not people that were into self-care and 
you know I what? I, you, I got to take care of me. For, I got to do me first. And then we're going to go ahead and handle you. It was totally not like that. It was self-sacrifice. It was, um, you know, that's what he calls us to do. And he calls us to do the same thing in marriage. Right. That's what it is. It's just a servant's heart serving this one person above all others. That's, that's what marriage is. And mm-hmm. uh, having that empathetic nature, it's nothing that... <laughs> I say nature, it's human nature is completely contrary to empathy. (laughs) Right. So um, don't, don't worry about yourself. I mean, you're breathing, you're doing good. That's how I kind of look at it. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I'm breathing, I'm doing good. I'm living better than 99.9% of most people on the planet. I've got an amazing job. I have an awesome house with an awesome family. And yeah, my back and my back hurts. My feet hurt. But you know what? I drove to work. I didn't have to walk. And uh drank clean water. I drank clean water. Took a hot shower before you did. Yeah. So, you know, just shut up and for me anyway, I, I tell myself, like, hey, go do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I think um I think it's really and really um a great thing when you do go into that situation where you have a servant's heart in your marriage. But I think it's really important for people to know that if both people are actually serving each other, then your needs are met. But if you're killing yourself serving somebody and you're not getting any reciprocal, um, which, you know, there is Mm -hmm. like, it's, it's okay. It's never going to be 50 50 in a, a marriage sometimes somebody carries more than the other person sometimes the other person carries more than you do but you don't ever want to get to a place where you're making yourself sick because then you're no good for your family either right. Right. but I definitely think that the healthy part of marriage is when when you're in a healthy marriage and both people love each other and both people want to serve each other because then you can fulfill each other's needs and then both people are satisfied in the way that God intended it to be. Mm. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's where, like, I think that's kind of like where I, I'm glad that you said that. Cause I was listening to him and I was kind of like, well, I don't, I don't want people to get the idea that we're like, yeah, like you should be totally like, no, you know, that was like, for me. But, like I, <laughs> <laughs> home and I'm like, you know, I want to crash out on the couch for a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? Go do the dishes. Like, put me in a pie hole. Yeah. You know, look yeah. at her. Listen to Baby Pig for like ever. <laughs> no, now that it, now that school's out, Baby Pig is probably really going to ramp up. Um, <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> Stand by for Baby yeah. Pig. I told him the other day they were doing it when we were at Costco, and I was like, "Oh my word!" Like, <laughs> weird. Um, but I think you know the other thing too that I was thinking of in marriage is, you know, things that I think of for us is that it's always trying to also like that awareness that marriage is under attack. And so to always kind of be scanning the Mm. scanning field for those landmines that might possibly be there, you know, um, obviously uh, your, your entire audience is probably not all Christians and stuff, but for those of us who are like, I believe, I believe the Bible when it says like the devil is he's a prowling lion. He's looking, he is looking for people to devour. And, you know, people have this idea that the devil is like with his pointy little horns and all that kind of stuff. And I always tell my kids, I'm like, no, no, no. He's going to come looking like everything that you've ever wanted. He's going to look, he's, he's deceitful, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, that's not how it's going to be. And he's usually going to strike when you're very vulnerable. Um, and all throughout scripture, we see like great, quote the quote the quote unquote great heroes of the bible all committed hor- a lot of them did like horrible things mm-hmm. um, when they were emotionally spent um when they were physically exhausted like when they just you know those things open up the doors to bad decision making in fact our pastor yesterday in the sermon said all of us are one decision away from just proving how wretched we all are you know mm-hmm. um and, and it's true. Like it really is true. Um, so the yeah. grass, the grass yeah. isn't greener on the other side. Uh-huh. It's greener where you water it. Yes, Yeah. exactly. Yeah. It is. 
so I think like, it's just always trying to like, you know, I've never really had, <laughs> to be honest, like I've never had trust issues with Cody. Like, um, we laughed a few years ago, we went to a big music convention and I always tell the story. I said, you know, they had these very scantily clad women all over the place there. And I laughed because there were a bunch of guitars like there too. And <laughs> I laughed and I said, you could put, you could put a naked woman in a room, but if it's filled with guns or guitars, my husband is not going to notice the woman. Because <laughs> 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 all these things, you know, um, I just, I, I always say that, like, I've, I've always had that. I've never had trust with you, but yet at the same time, you know, that doesn't mean that I'm like, Hey, look at all the websites or, Hey, you know, like, um, I think that there's things that you have to kind of set <laughs> barriers. And I know for me personally, I always make sure that like, um, you know, we've got a lot of friends and stuff. And if I'm picking up kids or whatever, you know, and if I have to have communication with, um, with a man, I always try to make sure that Cody's included on that text thread or something like that, just so that way it doesn't, people can't ever perceive things to be one way or, um, or it just doesn't open up the door for, for things to happen because, you know, I, I've seen, I've seen people get caught up, particularly women. I, I don't know why it just seems to have really happened a lot within the last like five years. I've seen this happen. A lot of women get into these emotional affairs um social media social media yeah starts a lot of it um but a lot of it it's like somebody from their past or you know or it was it just started innocently enough and going back to that like she didn't feel safe enough to talk to her husband about things you know and i'm not talking about one person in particular i'm just talking about like in, in general, general this is a pattern that i see going on is that yeah. they don't safe to talk to their husband and then it opens up the door for them to, you know, they connect with another man or he's funny or he gets me or, you know, and then it just starts the snowball effect that then they suddenly find themselves in a place that they never thought that they would see themselves in. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so. you definitely got to put those guards up. Um, mm -hmm. And like my wife said, you know, water your grass, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah it's it's funny because there is a lot of predators out there on social media and uh they'll do whatever it takes you know they're they they'll study you just like a predator does yeah and, oh yeah and they love bomb that's what they do that's what one of our past guests talked about how these young girls are are getting attracted by these sex traffickers is by love mm -hmm. bombing you know their father or whatever uh isn't telling them they're beautiful, they're, they're, they're cherished or anything like that. So these guys who are predators will actually love bomb them until they get what they need. And then they make that connection, you know, and I, I don't see there's any difference between that. And then some male predator who's after uh, a lonely housewife. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, but uh, we're going to go ahead. Thank you guys for coming on here. I appreciate you guys. I mean, this has been a, an amazing episode and I know it's going to help so many people out and uh, how can they reach you guys if they have questions, if that's okay. Um, well, I'm on Instagram after we just said social media. Could be. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram. Um, Katie's joyful life. That's probably the easiest way to kind of find me or that at gmail.com The Katie's joyful life at gmail.com and yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on Instagram as well. Um, you can get get a hold of me at uh, Highline Academy, H I L I N E Academy. Uh, yeah, good times. <laughs> and I would just like to put a disclaimer out there: we would love for women to contact Katie and men to contact yes. Cody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if if you are Hello. interested in talking to them. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awkward. <laughs> Thank you for that disclaimer because <laughs> yeah, if you're a man. I always say if you're a man messaging me and it's not related to the content that I am putting out there, um, I will not respond. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you guys, you guys have be blessed and uh, thank you for coming on and I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you guys. For having Thanks us. for having us on. I'm honored. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Mm -hmm.